uh, the things in life that are important and the things in life that we stress over, uh, the things that we work so hard for, the things in life that we want God to bless, yet we're doing it under our own power. Uh, and so I gave some illustrations last week uh, about doing things for Christ and for uh, doing things for the right reason. And to live for Christ today and not just for retirement. Because we don't know if we're going to make retirement. We don't know if we have the next 24 hours. And so um, I'm reminded under this illustration that uh, this professor was really high into illustrations. And I think I might have used this once before. But he, he loved to teach his class with illustrations. And one day, the students had come in, and he had put a target on the wall. And he said, I want you to, uh, and there were four darts on a table nearby, so they could throw at this target. And he proceeded to tell his students, said, I want you to draw, draw something that's really detestable to you. And everybody started to draw people that they didn't like. One person in this particular class, a lady, didn't like the professor, so she starts drawing the picture of the professor. She looked over at her neighbor, and the neighbor was, run, was drawing a picture of her ex-boyfriend that had hurt her. The next student on her left, he was drawing a picture of his brother, and so she proceeded to draw this picture of, of the professor, and even down to the pimples in and, and very good detail. And then the professor, once they got done, the professor... Uh, the professor goes, okay, I want you to come and I want you to put that, whatever you drew, on that target. And I want you to pick up the darts and I want you to throw the, the darts at that target. And so the class proceeds. And one picture after another goes up, goes up. And uh, they start throwing the darts. And, and uh, some threw with such force that it just tore the paper almost off the wall. When it came to this, one student's turn where she had drawn this drew, had drawn this picture of the professor he goes okay class that's enough and please go back to your seat she was totally disappointed she so wanted to throw darts at the professor that day and uh, she, she was kind of angry and bitter over that because she really wanted to express how she felt about him well the professor after everybody got sat down the professor goes over to the goes over to the targets where they had um, been thrown, and they start, he started peeling one picture off of another picture after another picture. And as you got down deeper and deeper and deeper, there were more holes pierced through each one of the pictures until you got to the target. And then the target was almost totally destroyed. And then he proceeded to take down the target, and behind the target was the picture of Jesus. And he ended with this one phrase, How you have done it unto those and to others, you've done it unto me. That's really something to think about, isn't it? How we treat others, what we think of others, how we share the gospel of Jesus Christ, how we pursue the things in life that really aren't pursuits at all because we're pursuing the things that are temporal on this earth and we're not pursuing the things that are important and that is the lives of other people. And as we heard uh, in uh, Matthew 25 just this morning, um, you know, uh, we need to be looking out for each other. And we need to be able to um, uh, uh, um, communicate the Bible, the Word of God, to those who don't know Him, to those who have gone astray. And, and we need to not worry about if they're going to be offended or not, whether we preach the Gospel or not. That's not important to me. If I'm going to offend somebody, I'd rather have it be a human being than God Himself. And so this whole message that I put together um, it, this is really talking about the stresses in life, losing our direction, losing our purpose. And as I talk to many people over this last, that last week, and, and as I talk to them continually, as I was up with, uh, at the hospital last night, there's so many people that are in despair. So many people that are trying to figure out what God's plan is for their life. And yet, we are going around in all the stresses of life. We're going around and not focusing on the right things. We're not helping other people. We were driving down the road the other day. And uh, uh, 
maybe you've, you've seen this, people pulled over by the side of the road and you don't know whether you should stop or not. What's the first thing you look for? Do they got a cell phone, right? And then if they got a cell phone, ah, I don't have to stop. Ah, that's good, right? Well, maybe we should stop anyway. We were driving down in, uh, to Lawrence uh, on, on uh, 59 and this lady had pulled over. She had a flat tire and, and I said, hey, oh, let's stop, let's give her a hand. So I, I changed her tire and I did the best that I could in that time of changing her tire to witness to her, uh, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't know the seeds that, that I plant or the seeds that you plant. You don't know. Just mentioning the gospel of Jesus Christ might get somebody to think because we can, we can work this life away and get to the end of our life and go, what have we really accomplished? What have we really done? What have I really done with my life? I've pursued all the things that, that the, the world can offer. I got, you know, I got a good job. I, I have great retirement. I have, uh, um, uh, you know, I've done everything I can to build and, 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 and have all these things. And yet we missed the mark. We missed the point. And like I was given that illustration about that gentleman last week about the $85,000 motorhome, and we saw that when we were down in Branson and it was up for sale. He had, four th- he had been able to put 4,000 miles on it before he had a stroke and had to sell it. He worked all those years for what? For what? And now he won't even be able to enjoy that. People are stressed out at work. They're stressed out because of, uh, of family members. Uh, people are stressed out because we've put ourselves there. Uh, we're stressed out because other people have done things. And we're running through this life, and we're going, what is the purpose and the meaning of all this? And so last week I gave the illustration. That, you know, all of us get to the point where we're kind of broken, where we're kind of just holding back, and we're just going, what is God's plan in my life? What has God got for me? What, what, why are all these things happening in my life? I didn't, and, and I've heard uh, this last couple of weeks, this same comment from different people saying, I never expected my life to be like this. And here we are. And my question is, what are we focusing on and what are you focusing on? And when in your distresses, in your time of trouble, and when you're down and you don't know where, where to turn, and, and you're wondering why God is allowing all these things to happen, I gave the illustration of Psalm 77 last week. Let's pray and then let's read portion of that. I'm going to get into Matthew 6 in a minute, but let's, let's just pray. Lord, thank you so much for all you're doing today, all you're going to do, all you've been showing. I pray, Lord God, that you'll be glorified in, in our life. I pray, Lord God, you would bring meaning to your word in our life, Lord, and we would surrender to you everything, Lord Jesus. We would surrender our life. We would surrender our jobs. We would surrender our families. We would surrender our problems. We would surrender our finances. Whatever it may be, Lord, we surrender it to you. And I pray, God, that you be glorified. And when we're in our troubles, let us hear the words of the psalmist. And I pray, Lord God, we would have the same cry. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You see, in this psalm, as I introduced last week, uh, you could hear the psalmist just really crying out to God. And he says, I cried out to God with my voice, to God with, uh, I, I, uh, with my voice. And he gave ear to me. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My hand was stretched out in the night uh, without ceasing. My soul refused to be comforted. I remembered God and, uh, and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. You hold my eyelids open. In other words, he's having sleepless nights. And he's pouring out to God. Have you ever poured out to God that way? And he's in, he's in great distress here. And there's really two parts to this psalm. So he says, you know, Lord, are you going to abstain from me forever? I can't sleep at night. My soul is, is just pouring out to you day and night, and yet I hear nothing. Well, how long are you going to abstain from me, Lord? And he's just crying out. He's, he's going, where is, where is all this coming from, Lord? But then he does something. And this is what I said last week. Then he does something. He said in, in verse 10, And I said, this is my anguish, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. And I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. I will also meditate on your work and talk of your deeds. In other words, what he does in his anguish, he remembers God. He remembers his power. He remembers what he did for them when he crossed them over into the Red Sea, how he delivered them from the Egyptians. I'm going to remember my God. And that's what I said last week. When you are in trouble, when you are in pain, when you can't figure out things, and you're totally stressed out, and you're 
you just think you can't take anymore. Where does your power come from? It comes from the Lord. And that's what I was saying last week. When you're down and you're out and you're stressed and you don't know where to go, you turn back to God. You learn to surrender the things to God that you need to surrender. Your power comes from Jesus Christ. Your power was nailed. The, 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 the power uh, that you get is, is from the uh, nails in Jesus' hands on that cross. In the power of the resurrection. We have power in His name. And when you're stressed and down and out, don't forget the power you have in Jesus Christ. He died for you. And that's what we see in, in, in Matthew 6. We'll get to in a minute. Why worry about tomorrow? What, how is that going to change anything? It's not. It's not. So I wanted to talk about some of these things and talk about these things that lead to, to depression and stress and depression in your life. And in, in your bulletin outline here, I, I gave a couple fill-ins for you, if you. Hopefully you have something to write with. But stress that leads and can lead and does lead to depression. I said here, I don't want you to just manage the stress in your life. I want you to surrender it so it's not there anymore. So you're not overwhelmed by it. So it doesn't lead you into this form of depression. How do you know if you're in this? Here are some warning signs for you. If you're, if you're feeling these things and multiples of these things, then you're probably headed to some point to some sort of depression. And we need, uh, I'm encouraging you today to try and surrender those things to God. And remember the cross. As, as the psalmist remembered what, what God did for for the people of Israel, in his anguish, I will look back to you. In your anguish, in your stresses, look back to the one who, who can help you. Look back to Jesus Christ. But here are some warning signs. You have overwhelming sadness in your heart. If you have overwhelming sadness in your heart, it might be leading to that. If you feel angry for no reason, and you just have, um, uh, uh, you know, you just go off all the time. And you have no patience for anybody. That could be a sign. You have a short fuse. And you just go off a lot. No tolerance whatsoever. There's a sense of feeling worth, uh, worthless, of worthlessness and no value. If you feel like that. People are just walking all over me. People don't even value my time. I'm, you know, and, and you start feeling bad about yourself. You start feeling worthless. You start feeling of no value. And then one time you can get, this isn't an exhaustive list by the way, and then you get to the point of despair. Ah, what am I going to do? And you, and, and you just, you know, we're walking around in a defunct and we're going, oh Lord, what am I going to do? Call out to the Lord. Remember the Lord. Remember Him. Remember the One who saved you, Jesus Christ. You know, the effects of, of stress and depression eventually will find, it will eventually find that it affects your health. It will affect your mind, what you think, how you do things. Um, it'll even affect your memory. Uh, everything will be focused on that thing. And it affects your mind and your body. Heart attacks, strokes, blood pressure goes high, tiredness. No, I got a scare this last week. I was trying to, I'm trying to get life insurance. It's really called death insurance, but, uh, you know, because it's only, she only gets it if I die, right? And so, <laughs> uh, and, and I don't think she wants me to die, so, I, you know, um, but uh, I'm trying to, so I had to go and get my blood pressure checked. Uh, and, and I don't trust this, and Kim, I don't know, I, I don't trust this blood pressure test at all. And it was a machine, they took it three times, and um, it said it was like one, one, 149 over 89. Now that may not be totally horrible, but my blood pressure is always usually about 117 over 70. And I'm going, why is it so high? Well, one, I didn't want to be there, so I had an attitude because I didn't want to go through all this testing just for life insurance. Just give me life insurance. I'll pay for it, okay? Nope, you've got to go through all this stuff, right, and get tested. I uh, still don't have the results back yet. But, uh, um, and, and so probably my attitude raised it, right? And, and I, it was just really bothering me. And so finally... Um, I, I told Gail, we're out in the car and go, I got to stop by Walmart and get my blood pressure checked. <laughs> you know, it was, and uh, it was 117 over 72. I go, why was that so high? I, I, so now I don't trust the test, but I don't know. Maybe it was, all she could tell me, well, it's calibrated, well, it's calibrated. And I go, well, I don't know. I don't know what they calibrated it to, but it wasn't to my heart. 
And so this just really bothered me. So um, when I was up at the hospital with Jenny last night with her dad, I go, hey, there's a blood pressure machine. So I stuck my arm in the blood pressure machine. It was like 117 over 74. I, and I don't understand why it was so high. And uh, Kim, maybe you can explain that for me someday. Um, but stress. Maybe I was under stress. It, it does weird things to you. Okay, it, 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 can, it can raise your blood pressure. It can raise, you know, just your attitude and the way you handle things um, really uh, can affect your body, okay? Um, and so you get into this point of feeling de- in despair and you just don't know what to do. You walk around and you go, God, where am I? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And we worry and we worry and we worry and then we get more despair and we worry some more and then we get into depression and then we worry about more and we just, and pretty soon it's like this, you know that song? That never stops in your mind. It goes round and round and round and round and you're trying to get rid of, you know what you need to do but you can't shut it off. It's just there. It's just there, and, and you're wondering, you want to have faith in God, you want to have trust, but in our humanness, we hang on to all of these things. We take on all the responsibilities of the world and other people or, or uh, our families, or, or we're having these issues with finances and divorce and, and, and what else it might be, and, and now we're into this despair mode, and we just can't seem to get out of this. We'll turn to Matthew 6. Chapter, chapter 6, verse 25. I want to encourage you with this passage of Scripture this morning. When you're feeling like this in life, turn to the Word. Now this would be Jesus, and he'd, this would be part of the Sermon on the Mount in chapters 5-7. through seven. But he goes in here in, in, six, in Matthew 6, 25. It says, Therefore I say to you, now, wait a minute. Okay, this is Jesus talking, right? Now, he goes, I am saying to you. I'm saying to you. Okay, so this is, take this as a command almost. It says, do not worry about your life. First thing, don't worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink or, or, or nor about your body, what you, will, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into the barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit or one day to his stature, to his days? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they, are, how they grow. and They neither soil nor spin, and yet... I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the fields, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into uh, the oven or the fire, some versions, will he not much more clothe you? And listen to this. He says, O you of little faith. O you of little faith. Therefore do not worry, saying, what shall, I, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need these things. Now here it is. In your troubles, in your worries, in your stresses, whatever they may be, brought on by yourself or by other people, or all the problems that you have, all the worries that you have, here's the key. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be added to you. He says, seek the kingdom of God. Seek me first. But no, what we're doing is we're seeking help in our finance. We're seeking help for relief of this. We need to seek the kingdom of God first. Call unto me, he says, all you who are weak and heavy laden. And he says, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And that's today. Today we work on today. When tomorrow comes, we'll work on tomorrow. When the day after that comes, we'll work on that day. Take it a day at a time. We were talking and reminiscing last night 
And my heart's been heavy. I, I, you know, it just has. It's, I think the purpose of, uh, of, of getting into this message is just my heart's been heavy for a whole lot of reasons. And the world just seems to be unjust. And then um, we just, you know, try to uh, escape from it. I, I, I told Gail, I go, man, you know it would be nice? Let's just, let's just hook up the camper, go on vacation, and never come home. Do you ever feel like that? I go, I, she goes, that's not reality. I go, no, don't tell me that. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear about reality. I want to think about never coming back and just being on vacation for the rest of my life. But it's not reality, is it? It's just not. We live in a troubled world where we must work, and there's a lot of problems, and there's health issues, and we, we see live, loved ones die, and we have to bury people, and one day ourselves we will have to perish these bodies. These bodies will give out. But if you seek the kingdom of God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, We don't look for the relief in this world. We're looking for the eternal relief of heaven, and that is in Jesus Christ. So don't worry about tomorrow. And I have to talk about myself because we reminisced even last night. You know, I'm just saying, man, I I like to sometimes, uh, I, I feel like sometimes I'm abandoning God when I'm not listening to Christian music. You know, I like to listen to Christian music. It's uplifting, and it's, it's just one of those things that, that just, you know, I want to hear the Word of God. It's one way for me to feed the Word of God into my body when I'm driving. But there's this um, uh, Pandora channel I like to listen to. It's called John Denver Radio. <laughs> yeah. And so on the way to the hospital yesterday, I, I kind of split the, I go, God, I hope you're okay with me. So I listened to Christian radio all the way up, and I listened to John Denver radio all the way back home. Okay? And this one song came on, and isn't it amazing how a song, and the reason I like it is because that one song takes me back to the, to the happy days of growing up. It just takes you and it plants you right there. And this one song comes on and I remember traveling in the big old Buick station wagon that dad had. And in the old, remember the old 8-track radio, the 8-tracks, remember those? It never worked very good, you know? And we were listening to John Denver. And that's why I like it. It takes me to that moment in time. It seems like a happier time. It seems like, a, not that I'm unhappy, but it's just a great memory. And I remember traveling down the road and we were all singing to John Denver on an 8-track radio and a brown Buick station wagon. But it's just uh, something to remember. And that's sometimes what I do when I'm stressed. I start listening to things that remind me of, of things of my past. But let me... What was that? Did I say something wrong? Oh, Lois? You said you <laughs> I was a Jim Croce guy and, you know, back in the day. But effects of stress affects the body, affects how you think, it affects what you do, it affects what you say, it affects, how you, it affects everything in life. It even affects your job. You get to the point where you don't even like your job anymore. It just affects everything. And so we need to remember that we need to seek the kingdom of God first, okay? So it affects, um, eventually you will find that it affects your health and your mind. Um, in your relationships. You'll have lower self-esteem. You won't have a lot of self-esteem. I don't like to talk about self-esteem because a lot of self-help books out for that, but it will. It can affect your marriage and all kinds of things and even your relationship to God. So let me go through these real quick. It affects your relationships. It will begin to pull you away from your family and your, even your church. All you want to do is you want to live in isolation and you want to live alone. You don't want anybody to be around you. You will isolate yourself and uh, you won't want any relationships, not even with God. Everything will suffer. And the consequences of that will continue to, to drive you fr- further into despair and depression. It affects your behavior. When you begin to isolate yourself, you begin to, to starve yourself of the things that you really enjoy, the things that you really need, the things that are healthy for you. Maybe you're, uh, you don't walk anymore, you don't run anymore. Uh, you don't do sports anymore. Uh, certain activities aren't even, you know, and, and maybe you just sit around now and, and just really want to watch TV all day long. And maybe even pick up bad habits, some people. One thing to remember, though, is that you have days like this. Um, you need to look back to the Lord, the one who can pull you out of that depression. And that's easy to say, by the way. So hard to do. 
So what you got to do is you like, got to look at it in three dimensions, and that is your width. Okay, if you have, that's the width. Um, if you have, you know, the two or three of the symptoms that I've already um, uh, described, then you're probably not depressed. You're just having a bad day. You're just having bad things happen in your life right now. But if you get more, four or five and more of these piled on, then you're probably headed to depression. Okay, that's the width of it. You've got to look at the length of it. The length of it is how long you've been in it. How long does it carry on? Do you ever feel like you're on that, 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 that uh, walkway in the airport and you can't get off of it? It just keeps going and going and going. So you have the length of it. Sometimes it just doesn't seem like it's ever going to end. And then there's the depth of it. All the experiences that you have. How deep it goes in the heart. All these things can cause depression. All these things can... Um, I, I'm going to have to wrap up because I know I'm going too long. I'm going to go too long if I try to get to these other ones. So um, uh, I'll make up a new uh, uh, bulletin insert for you with the remainder of these next week uh, and continue on with this. But I want you to, to c- evaluate these things, the length, the width, the depth, how you're feeling, how you're dealing with the stress in your life. Have you really surrendered it to God? Are you really putting your faith in Him? Do you really trust Him? Because He's the one who can give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. I can't give you that. I can't take your problems away. And, and I was seeing last week, man, I wish I could. I see so many people in despair. And I, I went around the room a little bit last week about people that, that are, we've all got something going on in our life. And it's hard and it's heavy. And you wonder if it's ever going to end. You wonder if it's going to turn out okay. And if it doesn't turn out okay, am I going to be okay? This is life. It's not an easy walk. It's a tough one. But we need to learn to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. That's the Lord. We've got to trust in Him with everything that we have. Don't worry about tomorrow. The Lord has enough worries of its own. It's okay to plan. It's okay to uh, uh, you know, plan for retirement. But don't bank on it. We don't know if we're going to get there. How many stories I've heard where somebody finally reaches the age of retirement and then has a heart attack and dies six months, a year later. So you know what we need to do? We need to take the blessings that we have right now and all the troubles and all the worries, all the stresses, all the things we burden ourselves with, all the things that other people burden us with, our finances, and we need to say, Lord, this is yours. And we need to start enjoying today. Look around the room of all the people that are here. Look at your spouse or your best friend. These are all people that we love. We love each other. This is what we live for, relationships. We live for each other. We live for, for God to have an eternal home. And so I encourage you today, don't dwell on the things you cannot change. Change the things you can. Thank you.